Hey, Cypher here. Many of you have probably never heard of this film, since it only saw a limited release. It's also a religious movie. Hey, hold on. Come on. I know a lot of folks will instantly equate this to the likes of God's Not Dead or The Passion of the Christ, where it's basically preaching to the choir, and also really boring for anyone who's not predetermined to have it in their graces. You can see that happening in the comments section for my silence review. A lot of people are talking about how they found it meaningful or something along those lines and how dare I find it boring, even though the movie was really boring. <laughs> also, there's a bunch of Spanish Inquisition denialists in there too, so that's fun. While we're talking about those comments, let me just say they are dead wrong if they honestly believe the Japanese Inquisition persecuted more people than the Spanish or Portuguese Inquisitions. Atrocity denialists are the most sinful conspiracy theorists. Anyways, Novitiate is not a zealot film. Blessed be. The way it deals with faith is much more akin to Ben-Hur. The good one, of course. Oh, I can go on and on about that title. In films about faith that are written well, you do not have to believe to understand, because it is based on storytelling, not theology. And they picked a very interesting period to talk about. Is this is uh, something to do with this Vatican II. Because it's all about Vatican II. So Vatican II refers to when the Vatican was replaced by an exact duplicate by alien. Shh, we don't talk about that. Okay, the jokes are getting ridiculous. Obviously, it refers to the Second Ecumenical Council of the Vatican. Ave Maria, gee, it's good to see you. Getting ecstatic and sort of dramatic and doing the Vatican right. These councils come together to decide on Catholic doctrine. The last one had been at the Vatican in 1869, but was ended by the Franco-Prussian War, as well as Italy coming together as a whole. All that history of trouble within Italy and throughout the world stopped the council from reconvening. After a century, it was about time to hold another one. This one happened at the Vatican again in 1962, and only ended in 65, but was a big one that shook the church to its very foundations. Vatican II was the beginning of a new era in Catholic history. Perhaps the most obvious change was that clergy were allowed to give Mass in their native language, called the vernacular. Mass was always given in Latin before Vatican II, but Vatican II was a complete restructuring. Everything from the music to decorations within the church were changed. They're permitting the use of secular music in portions of the liturgy. I thought it would be a nice idea to uh, redo some of the liturgical music. First you get down on your knees, fiddle with your rosaries, bow your head with great respect and genuflect, genuflect, genuflect. And... They chopped away a bunch of old calendar celebrations, reached out to other Christian sects, like Anglicans, and even continued to push for more textual criticism of the Bible. It was a general liberalization of church doctrine. But the biggest change is what happened with nuns. It was believed beforehand that women who cloistered themselves away from the outside world and symbolically married Christ would be given special placement in heaven. They wore a vestment called a habit, which signified their devotion to God. This was a belief that had driven nunneries for centuries. Vatican II changed that. One oral historian described the change well by saying, In pre-Vatican II days, Catholics had thought that nuns lived on higher ground, closer to God than the laity, and many women had entered the convent believing they would always be special. The sacrifices they had made were somehow worthwhile. In return, they had received a certain status. Suddenly, according to the Council, everyone had the potential and the obligation to be holy. Members of the religious order no longer had an exclusive claim to spiritual perfection. Nuns would have to search for a new identity, as well as new ways to minister. Along with their status being removed, they were also no longer mandated to wear the habit. This was a devastating blow to nunneries. A decade after Vatican II, there had been a decrease of 28% for all Catholic nuns. The liberalization of Catholicism had come at a cost. This movie follows the devotion of one such novitiate, as she works her way through a nun order in the mid-1960s. 
we see her go through the trials and tribulations of the training. What's especially powerful is that we see how her devotion is rewarded. She sacrifices food, safety, and family to the cause. Then, Vatican II steadily influences the nunnery, and things get very interesting. Please be advised also that all nuns are no longer required to wear the traditional habit as a symbol of their lifelong matrimony to Christ. It's a tidy little story. It's fictitious, of course, but it fits the oral histories I've read about the period. It also delves into the problem of the time. It will ruin the very institution of Catholic nuns as well. With physical penance, cloister astration, and lesbian issues. This is an excellent exploration of the changes that Vatican II wrought, so check it out if you can.